Thank you, Vashni. Uh, I will be speaking on uh, cerebral visual impairment. Um, this is, I can see all youngsters um, here, and I think I say that uh, the next generation, I think you are going to see more and more of such children because many children are being saved, and um, you know we are going to see them. Hope we can all make a difference by helping these children and not saying that okay we can't do anything to them. So it is a deficiency basically in the function of the vision and uh, something is wrong with the visual pathways or processing centers in the brain. So basically posterior to the lateral geniculate body. So the eye works is fine so that's what we explain to all the parents which they find it so difficult to find out why the child is not seeing though the eye is fine but the brain is not understanding or interpreting what the eye sees. So this is exactly what you will tell the parents. So now, you know, five years back, I would not even be thinking of CVI. I can tell you, even I, mean, I was not, I, was, I am also started doing CVI since last five years only because a lot of children are being referred and uh, they were being saying unexplained visual loss. Why is the vision not improving? Of course, the older children. Or they were being referred, okay, the, neuro uh, the neurologist said, child can't see, okay, you go and show. So um, this is becoming now one of the commonest cause of visual impairment and we should all be aware of it we should all be talking to gynecologists, to neonatologists, to pediatricians. How do we tackle this and prevent this condition? Because what it affects is not only the vision. So basically, it connects the dorsal and the ventral stream. Both cause dysfunction. So where the affected is. So either it tells you the where. That is where it connects the occipital area with the posterior parietal cortex. And or the what. Basically, the occipital and the temporal lobe connection. So I'll tell you. in So... A very nice talk by Sovita last uh, when during my instruction course. What she nicely pointed out was where do you localize them? What we are trying to do a study and to find out, like by localizing, can we predict what to the parents later on that, okay, this is what you are localized and this is what you're going to have the visual behavior or the effects in those children. Maybe it should come out another one year. So we found that most of the cases were in the posterior parietal lobe and then the occipital lobe, so then the vision is going to be affected and also condition called as PVL. So um, we'll come out very soon. So what we need to do is that uh, we need to order for these DTI scans or the MRI scans. We have to be careful because these children also have, most of some of them have epileptic seizures. So uh, unless it's really, really required, please don't ask for every child uh, uh, MRI. But um, it may be important to localize the lesion. So what I would say, the simple test, now these tests are mainly done in the OPD. If now this, I'm presenting it backwards because uh, most of the time the children are coming very late to us. So when your vision is very subnormal, like, and you find that everything else in the, uh, you know, you have checked the vision, you have checked the anterior segment, you have checked the posterior segment, everything is fine, but still the vision is not improving to more than 618 or 612. You find a mild temporal pallor. What is the reason? So I want to differentiate whether it's an OVI or a CVI. I mean, whether it's because of ocular cause or CVI. The simple Lea puzzle test where you can see that the child is not able to orient in space. There is no eye high quantity. You can't even make out like what is the, you know, what are the uh, pictures? What are the, so what are the shapes? So he's taking a lot of time to do it. So this is what uh, is especially the problem when the child has CVI. So these are simple things which you can make in the OPD. This is what Carpenter made for us. Uh, so there is an impaired visual guidance movement, what we call this as, and this is called as optic ataxia, and this is when the posterior parietal lobes are affected. So same thing, we can see that again, the child, you know, the uh, this video is tilted, but you know, the normal child will exactly take the, say the slot which is given, the card is given, he will put it exactly the slot, whether it's horizontal or vertical. So this orientation is again by the brain, and you find that in CVI children, that this orientation which we have created a mailbox like the Liam mailbox is defective and the child even, you may think this is a simple thing but the child is not able to orient that card and put it into the slot. So this helps us to differentiate why this child is having, what this is not an OVI but this is a CVI. So other things in the temporal lobes are recognizing of facial expressions, recognizing colors. So all this mostly the, uh, the neurologists can't help us. Uh, they do find these, they tell us that the patient is... Uh, so most of our common causes which we found was mainly hypoxia and uh, hypoglycemia. The other things, of course, our neuro de uh, ophthal department headed by Dr. Sovita, she uh, f says most of the time she gets the infections of the CNS or the traumatic brain injury or seizure disorder. So these are the other in, uh, causes for CVI. So um, 
we find that when if it is late second to third trimester the hypoxia or the ischemia is mainly in the subcortical white matter with gliosis called as a periventricular leukomalacia and if it's term it's called as ankylomalacia so we published a paper and uh, we found that uh, most of these uh, you know preterm delivery was positive in 37.5% of the patients and in the three in the preterm group we found that many were born between 34 to 37 weeks of gestation so in what we are doing is that along when we go for the rop screening if they ask us we give them a card and tell them that okay please if you are, there is a preterm baby please around 30 percent are going to have may have cvi after six months or one year and maybe the pediatrician also may not find out please do come to us and at least get a eye examination done to say that it is appropriate uh, so that we have saying that it is according to the age so this is very important if we can help the children as early as possible most of them had 90.9% uh, .9 had an eventful perinatal period so this history also is very very important so postnatal causes are basically what we find them most of them have uh, cerebral palsy 19.3% of patients so what we the new vision is normally normal so you find that eye examination everything is normal in CVI in OVI basically it's abnormal when you correlate the ocular findings and the visual function you find that it is grossly they do not correlate at all in CVI and uh, you if you want to the response like you want to try it if you want to treat for amblyopia or something we find that the response is very suboptimal so in unique characteristics are this we have seen that they will be gazing the head holding is not here the profound visual impairment uh, then we have the field effects. We have the simple, uh, we use a whiteboard and see where the field is defective. Where the, you know, take the board and see that child is looking at the up gaze or down gaze, if there's any field effects. So these are all simple tests which you can do in the OPD and you don't need a lot of money or, uh, you know, a lot of finance to start a CVI clinic. Uh, and other things is there is a visual latency. Like this is a child who had operated for cataract and of course they had cns problems and even after the cataract surgery giving the appropriate glasses found that the child still had difficulties in viewing in a complex environment so the parents said the surgery has been done now six months are over where the child is not able to see well so these are the children who we need to send to vision rehab of our early intervention to improve their coordination color preference is something which we see with red and yellow so the key to understanding is that there's an attraction to color so these visual functions you can make them it can easily be overcome by simple environmental kind of modification and this is what the early intervention specialists have taught me and that's how we refer to them so that they can improve this as much early as possible visual assessment we have we do it with the uh, lia pedal chart so this is the lia pedals which is uh, which is used we can use it unilaterally or bilaterally because most of them have very poor vision even with tact they do not respond so when the vision is so poor we you need to use the lia pedals because parents always ask us after every sitting like how much the child vision has improved after the you know rehabilitation done. So this at least tells them that okay now it is 12,800, it has come to 2,900 or 2,600. So it helps the parents to prognost helps us to prognosticate and the parents feel right, feels better. So TAC has been used and uh, refraction is very important. We need to do the cycloplegic refraction. Uh, this is uh, important uh, because uh, we found that many of these children had a simple myopic astigmatism. Of course, we need to evaluate whether we need to give the, you know, according to age matched. We need not give less than two uh, cylinder in a child who's only one or two years, has, has age match for the pre-verbal children. But it, uh, Dr. Leah and Dr. Linda, who have done a lot of work with CVI children, they say that give even the minimal amount of astigmatism. I found the children don't wear them, so I do not give them because they don't wear them at all. Though they say that you should give even small amounts of correction of astigmatism. So it is important to do, we all should know the dynamic retinoscopy to do them because they, oh, most of these children have lag. So when they lag, basically either you put a plus, if they're not uh, cooperating for the lag, then you, you should have ready made plus three or plus four or plus six glasses. Put them on the baby and see where the child, you know, you can uh, actually see the visual response of the child to your Leah pedals or to your tag. So you can give these glasses to the children. And uh, Dr. Leah said, even up, you can go up to plus eight glasses. You know, I in one child, in fact, she had given a plus eight also, so that encouraging the child to you know, at least some, encouraging the child to at least visual, you know, to see some visual uh, target. So most of the Down children also have uh, a, a lack of accommodation. So contrast uh, is something uh, is uh, also uh, Im important to measure. So we have the, these are very, all these are very expensive charts. 
um so um, you know we have these are the um, contrasts of course we can't make these charts but uh, this could be an added if you want to if you're going to cvi practice we sh it is important to measure the contrast because this is what will help the vision rehabilitation expert that okay if this is there's a 5% loss or there's a 10% loss or a 100% loss and then we need to guide the expert that patient has this loss and we need to treat more and more so in our ophthalmic manifestation which we published we found that strabismus actually because being a strabismologist i think that's what the reason why it was referred more to the center as we found strabismus but i'm sure if the pediatricians start referring more and more early it will be the poor eye contact poor visual response poor eye coordination which will be the maximum response a uh, neuro ophthalmic uh, manifestation of the findings which we find are basically we have we may have uh, uh, conjugate gaze deviation or uh, you know or uh, you can have nystagmus we should not hurry to treat these conditions we first need to treat uh, tell the uh, you know te uh, tell the vision rehabilitation person to help the child to fixate focus first then go on to tracking and scanning and then maybe we should try to intervene because what i find is that if we intervene very very early without a tracking or a scanning your results are not going to come even with your surgery so pvl disc or others the pseudo glaucomatous disc which is the most common i think uh, most of them think it is glaucoma and refer to the glaucoma specialist uh, in such cases uh, we need to see the rim and if we suspect uh, we need to do in these children uh, mri to rule out a cvi in this cases and it is mostly seen in very preterm children who are more born less than 28 weeks strabismus is very high in these children isotropia and exotropia are common of course you can have vari angle variability and shifting patterns do not operate them very very early like in one year or two years of age i found that no point in operating them very unless it's a constant deviation and the child is shown showing some forms of fixation otherwise you will land up with conjugative exotropia after one or two years so uh, we need to have stable deviations wait maybe till the child is having a stable uh, you know even the other motor conditions are stable and uh, then we can operate say around uh, you know even by operating early as 2 years i've done the study and found out there is no improvement in sensory or stereopsis even if you operate them before 2 years of age a very high focus on vision therapy and vision rehabilitation we can see that after the surgery they improve in their writing you find that their hand eye coordination much much improves they start walking better they start writing better parents themselves say that the quality of life has improved so uh, i would say that 95% uh, of the children with cvi developed higher level of vision within period of 3.7 years but these 3.7 years i think we should for we should we should be with the parents we should encourage them because what they find is that 6 months no improvement one year only you get the improvement slowly and slowly but i think we should encourage them please go ahead and uh, be with the therapist it takes time but you will see the result and i'm telling you at there are children who now i am following up for 6 to 7 years at 6 to 7 years most of them have got 624 636 vision who at the beginning had no eye contact unless like it is a very bad cerebral palsy child or you know you have the child with uh, you know a lot of seizures and have uh, a shunt with these are children who they also develop uh, optic atrophy so those are the children with a poor visual prognosis but posterior parietal lobe affection or if you have you know a uh, temporal lobe or a frontal lobe they do improve and they do get 636 so don't say no to these children and please treat them as early as possible that is my only uh, take away message <laughs> see these are children who have started walking and you know so please don't say no i mean i'm really passionate about this and i don't want any children from cvi to be not given treatment as early as possible Um, I have a question, ma'am. Uh, most of these patients with CVI they usually have strabismus also. So, what is the indication of surgery, and what is the right time to operate them? Yeah, I mean basically, what I find is that if there is an isotropia, uh, you means because most of the times they have isotropia, say they have a constant isotropia, say around more very large angle deviation and a constant. If it is intermittent, I would not touch. because i mean what i find is there's a lot of variability then sometimes it is 30 you measure sometimes it's 40 to sometimes it's 50 and they intermittent so i keep them on patching i tell the parents like they'll keep them on patching we're not losing vision anyway like me and manaswini had done the study anyway before the age of 2 to 3 years even after operation we found no stereopsis in these children absent stereopsis so why should i go and subject them to high risk so uh, these are the children and if you have in exotropia i think you can operate them after 4 to 5 years of age 
because uh, you know because they're not scanning and they're not, they have no great fixation how will you measure them exactly if you they have child is not even fixating properly and exotropia if these children they do not what i find is they're not lost muscle of vision now the question is is one xy easy the question is dvd because all of these like i now i have realized that any patient i think even vashni knows that she also has uh, asked whenever you see a dvd for an imaging because we find that most of these children have had some perinatal or intranatal problem when you take the history and an mri also tells you that there is a cbi so in dvd i think you if the child has a significant face turn or a head tilt and if there is amblyopia because of the large amount of dvd i think you should go ahead for a surgery of course this also around 2 to 3 years i would still not recommend in very very small children unless the is isotropia is very constant and like say 60 70 prisms of isotropia otherwise in dvd exotropia nystagmus let's wait 3 to 4 years let them all stabilize from all their other in, uh, you know neurological problems we get a good measurement dvd results are really good the parents i have seen the quality of life improving they say that now the ch child is able to write to talk and they also say that you know i had a child who had operated i didn't put any case story but i had a child who had operated at around i think he was in the 10th standard after the surgery of dvd for a cvi child he was 636 624 he could not with the you know with the compass he could not draw and he said i i'm i'm failing in geometry all the time after the surgery really he could do all those and like that was really surprising for me so i think we should uh, intervene and operate in these children so most of the time these children also have nystagmus associated so uh, presence of nystagmus will that have any impact on your decision making in uh, strabismus surgery no, it's the same it's, it's the same, the same. Like for, uh, if you have a same like how in normal nystagmus if you have mm -hmm. like uh, if it's uh, um, you know if you want to correct for the head posture or uh, Uh, I'm I'm not done the hurdle level for procedure for this uh, as such because visual impairment. I don't know how much of visual acuity will actually improve, but with the head posture you can see that suppose the child is maintaining head posture and there is a two line improvement with the head posture, why not go and do uh, augmented uh, you know modified Anderson procedure? The sessions will be better, and uh, or if there's a very less significant face turn, of course you will go in for a modified Keston bomb. So these uh, I think nystagmus surgery after six years you can uh, most of them you can intervene. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Suma, Madam. Actually, I've been working with the uh, pediatrician and neurologist for uh, CVI cases, and one observation which our pediatrician has uh, seen, I think, uh, is that uh, the neck holding is extremely important for the patient with the CVI. I mean, the earlier they are able to hold their neck, better is the visual outcome in these cases. So, uh, I mean, uh, the role of uh, um, other allied fields like occupational therapists, physiotherapists, is also very important to get a good visual outcome in these.